morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, as Ian just said, I'm, I'm the VP Marketing at Centrix. Um, and my role today is to bring you back to the real world, to the physical world. Uh, God knows we spend a lot of time on our screens, but um, there's actually a lot going on out there. Uh, and we, if we thought we had physical security covered up until a few years ago, um, now we need to look up in the sky and there's a hell a lot of going on out there. So um, we're Centrix. Uh, I'm not going to talk about us, uh, but just give you an overview of, you know, um, what's going on in the drone ecosystem um, and look at it from different angles. Um, do I have a clicker? Thank you. Okay. So for some of us, uh, it might look like a distant future, right? Just like the the autonomous cars, uh, we might think that you know this will happen someday. It's a little bit of a sci-fi scenario, um, but actually, um, drones are taking an increasing uh, role in our lives in various industries. Um, I always try in my presentation to bring a very recent example. Uh, in this case, it's not from the Middle East, uh, but I think it's, it's, it's a breakthrough and it's a world first uh, use case and, and that's why I'm talking about it uh, very, very shortly. So it was announced a couple of days ago uh, that um, the city of Antwerp in Belgium um, is going to launch the world first drone hive, drone in a box, um, um, I don't know even how to call it, it's a program, an initiative. Um, what it means is that six autonomous drones are going to fly day in, day out, above uh, the Antwerp port area, just to make sure that everything is secure. Um, and, and ensure the overall security of, of the port. Now, that's where we see that you know, drones are really used for amazing purposes. And this is just one example, but actually uh, it's true in almost every single industry that uh, I bump into. From law enforcement, you know, police are sending, uh, in many countries in the world today, the drones are the first responders. They go on site to verify that indeed a crime has happened or that a catastrophe, uh, uh, what, what's the magnitude of such a, of, of a, of a given catastrophe. Uh, energy plants are using drones in order to uh, perform surveillance and maintenance. Um, you know, uh, we, we all know the media are using drones uh, in order to broadcast um, uh, mass events. Um, so we really, really find uh, the usage of commercial drones almost everywhere. And I think very similarly to what was discussed in the previous panels, uh, you know, just like any new technology, uh, drones are coming along with threats. Now, in this specific case, the threats are slightly different from what we've just discussed so far this morning. Um, and just to simplify the picture, the way we look at the world uh, at Centrix is in three colors. <laughs> um, on one end, you've got the blue drones. What we call the blue drones is basically the authorized commercial drones. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, used by uh, Amazon, used by... Uh, law enforcement uh, agencies and so on and so forth. But on the other side of the spectrum, you've got the red drones uh, used by criminals and terrorists to smuggle drugs and money and phones into prisons, uh, to do um, intelligence, uh, to, uh, well, we, we had you know, examples just in the news this week, or last week was it, above the Kremlin, right? I mean, we see it day in, day out uh, in the headlines and they are making a lot of headlines. The third color is just the white drones, um, just like my 10-year-old boy who's playing 
uh, and you know, using drones for recreational purposes, but these drones are a threat as well because the, those, um, I would say, clueless <laughs> drone users have no idea where is it allowed to fly a drone and why, where is it not. Uh, my son wouldn't even, you know, it wouldn't cross his mind that flying a drone near an airport is dangerous. It would say, oh, how cool is it? I can, you know, take pictures of, 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 a, of an airplane taking off or landing. So this is the way uh, uh, we look at things. Um, and basically, um, the drone or the counter drone market uh, has been really exploding, you know, at the pace of um, of, 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 of the, man the, the pace at which drones themselves have been increasingly being used. Uh, we see the threats uh, increasing, but also we see the usage of drones for good increasing. So how do you balance between those two things? Well, um, what's been happening in the market uh, is that a lot of, I would say, traditional technologies that were actually used for other purposes um, have been trying to stretch their capabilities in order to uh, overcome the drone threat. So just as an example, uh, the use of radars, right, in order to detect drones, because drones are a very different animal, right? They're very small, uh, and again, we're focusing on commercial drones, any drone that you, you know, can freely access uh, and buy in, a sh in any shop. Uh, they're very small, they fly very quickly, um, they fly at a very low altitude, um, and you know they're very difficult to detect. So um, uh, radars, for example, are trying increasingly to try and, and, and cover part of the detection uh, uh, capabilities of the market, but radars come with downfalls, right? They will uh, have a lot of false alarms. They will detect other things such as birds or any moving uh, object in the air. So uh, they have their limitations. Uh, so, you know, uh, other types of technology have been used, such as um, um, aero optical, right? Uh, in, in, opti in, in order to detect uh, uh, drones, uh, people said, okay, let's, let's use very smart cameras, but that also comes with limitations because you need the line of sight and you, you know, then you, you detect the drones pretty uh, late in the process. Um, physical um, uh, uh, tools have been used such as throwing nets or, or just throwing a, you know, flying a drone at a drone just to shoot it down. Um, and, and then on the other uh, side of the spectrum, in terms of mitigating the threat, the threat um, uh, you've got technologies such as jammers or spoofing. And those as well come with downsides because they impact all the communication signals within an area. So it's very well uh, to use them maybe in a military setup, but uh, it's very uh, um, it's less suitable in, in, in an urban environment, right? So we've looked at, at, at this and, and tried to uh, define what are the requirements for the ideal uh, counter drone solution, if you will. Uh, and the first thing we realized is that uh, most of the security officers that we, that we uh, meet uh, are talking about a multi-layered approach about um, fusion of sensors because none of these technologies that I just mentioned prior um, uh, do not give the full answer, right? So you need to mix the different technologies in order to build your lines of defense. So we said, okay, what if you could have um, A, a technology that integrates with all the rest, but that can also operate as uh, the, an end-to-end -end solution. And so um, we, we, we basically designed uh, a solution that is integrated. What does it mean? It means that it covers identifi um, sorry, uh, detection, tracking, identification, but also mitigation of the drones. So it does the full spectrum end-to-end -end of, of all the capabilities. Uh, and then we thought, okay, okay so what, what do you need in order to, again, be an ideal uh, counter-drone solution? So the first element that uh, we think is critical is the accuracy, right? Because uh, if you are 
uh, providing false alarms, uh, you, you create some kind of a fatigue for the operator, and we certainly don't, do not want that. So you need to be very accurate and be able to locate not only the drones, but also their remote controls. Where, where is the controller of the drone is? Because you probably want to, in, in criminal cases, you want to apprehend those people and you want to arrest them. So accuracy of the location and being able to determine the altitude, uh, how far is the drone, and not only directional uh, estimation is, is absolutely key. Um, and so that's, that's the first element. Um, the second element has to do with open ar architecture, again, because you want to be able to integrate with, you know, whatever technology is already in place in terms of command and control. You don't want to bring more complexity. Security is, is, a, is, a, is a complex matter uh, as it is. We don't want to add to that. So having an open architecture is kind of adamant. Uh, then you want to ensure operational continuity. You know, when an airport has to shut down its operation because they might have seen a drone, this is something that you want to be able to avoid. Um, so you want a solution that is reliable and that um, operates um, autonomously, that is not complex uh, to, to operate. And this is what um, we've tried to bring to the table. Um, and then you want absolute safety, as I said. Uh, if drones are, you know, flying above uh, a city, and someone mentioned smart cities, right? Um, what we are seeing, you know, if I look at the bigger picture of our story, right now we are protecting, uh, we're protecting very localized sites or missions. Well, whether it's, you know, special, special operations teams or uh, uh, a prison or a stadium, but in the future, if we want those. Uh, drone highways to become a reality and have the Amazons of the world and the delivery of the world delivering their parcels and, and their uh, meals um, to, to people, then we need to be able to protect those authorized drones from the reckless and the criminals. So um, this will become a, a kind of a smart city uh, topic, we expect. Um, and you, you need to be able to protect them with safety, you do not want to shut down a drone or take down a drone and create collateral damage, right? So that's also something that needs to be taken into account. Then, of course, cost efficiency is always uh, uh, nice to have. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, having a, a solution that um, can um, start small and then expand uh, according to the coverage that you want to protect. Um, and then being able to adapt to any mission. Again, as I said, you might want to protect somewhat, a, a, a site um, um, temporarily or permanently. So you need to have uh, the option of having a solution that is fixed or that is portable. You may want to protect a convoy of VIPs, right? So you need a solution that can be vehicle mounted. So all these setups uh, also need to be uh, uh, taken into account, and that's obviously what we're trying to take, you know, to bring to the table. But again, I, I promised I wouldn't talk about it. So, um, uh, so but th these are qu kind of the criteria when we look at uh, at, at the market, and um, and I think you know maybe the best proof of uh, how this threat and and this whole ecosystem is expanding is the FAA, so the Federal, Federal Aviation Administration in the US, has just announced uh, the 58 stakeholders that will be uh, the rulemaking committee for defining the rules and regulations around uh, drone uh, detection and mitigation in the states. And when you look at the list of, you know, those 58 members, so yes, of course, you have people from the FAA, from aviation, from airports, etc. But you have uh, the National Football uh, League involved, you've got Amazon involved, you've got prisons. So all these bodies want to influence the regulations because here again, and, and, and it's a matter of education, as you all spoke about uh, earlier this morning, it's a matter of education and having the re regulator educating themselves at the speed of, of uh, uh, progress uh, of technology uh, and being able to keep up with that pace uh, in order to adapt the, 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 the regulations. Because today you, you are not allowed 
to take over a drone uh, in any in almost any country in the Western world. So, uh, and and again, unless there is a critical uh, um, you know critical threat, but and these things need to change um, and and evolve. So. Um, I think that, that that's kind of uh, summed it up. I'll show you a very, very, very quick demo. I think it's, it's one minute and then um, I'll take it away. Uh, I just want to show you how our um, solution works. Uh, it's, it's very quick, so don't worry if you don't get everything. You just come and visit us at the booth later on. We've defined a perimeter that is a no-fly zone. That's the red square that you see, uh, and then We've uh, uh, defined uh, uh, the H, the white circle with an H is the, uh, the home where we want to land uh, any breaching drone. So here we identify drones flying around. Uh, as you can see, we detect everything about them from their altitude, their model, their serial number, their unique serial number, and we are able to um, understand whether th these are authorized drones or non-authorized drones. And the minute a drone breaches the perimeter, we are basically uh, pairing ourselves to the drone and make it think that we are the controller. So uh, we kind of take over and uh, make the drone land safely in a pre predefined zone um, as agreed with, with the customer. So that, that's in essence what, what we do. Uh, and we think we, we are the only viable uh, solution for urban environments, noisy environments in terms of communication signals, uh, and 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 that's that's what we do. We're just outside the door. Uh, come and visit us. Thank you.